And now we have uh, two of my best friends in the auto industry, Carl Broward, Senior Director of uh, Insights at Kelly Blue Book, and James Bell, Head of um, Consumer Affairs at General Motors. How are you guys? We're doing fabulous. How about you? Yeah, this is fun. We get to work together. I know. I know. It's, it's really great. So um, we're talking about uh, crash uh, tests. I mean, we see a lot of this information uh, coming around on, on, on online, and like we see some videos, and like, but what does this really mean for like someone like deciding uh, what car to buy? Well, I think the best thing about crash test ratings is that they're all going up, first of all, because all the cars are getting safer. And I think people are more aware of crash test ratings, so they're using those as a uh, component of their shopping. So they can come to somewhere like Kelly Blue Book, KBB.com, and they can see how many vehicles are scoring these top uh, five-star crash test ratings from uh, from NHTSA, or even the top big stick plus uh, from IIHS. And what they realize, I think, when they look at that is that most cars get very good ratings today, and it's, it's fabulous. It just means you, you can check that off on a lot of vehicles and still keep your choices pretty wide. Yeah, and Carl, do you see, uh, do you have any data at a Kelly Blue Book on, in terms of how many people really check for that particular aspect of the car when they are shopping around? I actually, we, we do. We have uh, ways to uh, ask our consumers. We have survey, surveys that are available online. We get a fairly good survey response rate from our, uh, we get up to like 19 million units a month. And we do know what they prioritize. And durability and dependability is always one of the top things. And price, of course, is always huge. But safety is always uh, in the top like three maybe for uh, consideration. And it's growing, right? And it's growing more all the time. People are more and more aware of it at, at all times. So, yes, safety is very important. And I guess uh, this, uh, I mean, the, the proliferance of information online, like years before when there was no, like, Kelly Blue Book page or, like, videos, YouTube videos, you know, that people could not see this information. It was more like an inside industry information, but now it's available for everybody, right? That's what's really changed, is that in, certainly in the last five years, and, and, and incredibly in the last 25 years, people are far more aware of safety technology, safety rating, uh, how well each car does. Of course, we always hear headlines if there's a recall on a vehicle that, that, that has an issue. So people are thinking about this, and I, you know, I mean, am I right, James? I think you know, you've seen what GM's done with all their cars in the last few years, not only adding to their structural integrity that they've had for a long time, but now adding active safety, too. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it's the price of doing business now, and it's, I just wonder to think maybe 20 years ago, you know, when our parents were buying cars, they, they didn't think of it in that respect. Yeah. And no. let's be honest, the, the vehicles probably weren't that safe. Right. And <laughs> so, yeah, it really is a different day, and as Carl points out, so many of the safety technologies that uh, we see on today's cars, not only is the, is fantastic engineering baked into the actual structure of the vehicle to be as safe as possible, but there's a lot of things that are now built into the car from a technology side to help you avoid the crash in the first place. Yeah. Uh, like I think of the, the Buick Encore. It has a, a suite of safety technologies like forward collision alert systems to notify you if traffic is slowing down ahead of you and, and you don't seem to be noticing it because you're still, uh, you know, still applying uh, gasoline and not putting on the brakes. Or um, rear cross traffic alert when you're starting to back out of a of, in a parking lot or something, and, and just keeping an eye on the traffic behind you and alerting you if somebody's just coming into your uh, your range without maybe being able to see in the mirror. And then the one that I really am a big fan of is the blind spot detection. This is a system that's built into the sides of the vehicle, and uh, basically it's a small indicator in the uh, side mirrors. And uh, at first, first, when you drive a vehicle with that technology, it's a little a little strange to have this little light flashing at you. Yeah, you have to get used to it. Well, not only get used to it, you start to embrace it. Because what it means, is it just takes away one of the fears that we all have when you go to change lanes that, you know, you check all your mirrors, you do the best you can, and ultimately you start to move the steering wheel and you want to be sure that uh, nothing has changed, uh, you know, nobody's come speeding up the side. And that's why I think systems like this are so important. Yeah, so James, uh, the Buick and Core just got uh, the five stars from the National uh, Highway Traffic and Safety Administration. And it, mm -hmm. it, it got it b with the new testing that they, they do. Uh, and also uh, because of the changes that GM uh, introduced into the car, structural changes, right? So that's that's a two-way lane for, for car manufacturers and the authorities to make the cars even safer, right? Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that because I remember probably, well, a decade or so ago and, and reading that car makers, and this is before I worked for General Motors, reading that car makers were building the vehicle to the standards. And I thought that's kind of cheating in a weird way because they're, 
you know, they're, they're, they know the results before they even offer the vehicle to NASA yeah. or IHS. But then I flipped my thinking, and I thought, actually, no, this is very good, because these agencies are putting out these very high standards, and the manufacturers are making sure, it's not just luck, they're uh, guaranteeing almost, in the sense, that they do the best they can in those studies. And so uh, it really kind of changed my thinking on it, and I know that it's deeply embedded now within the, uh, the culture, especially of General Motors, that the vehicle is, as, as Carl says, it's got the technology... Uh, sorry, the, the engineering built in to be as safe as possible in a crash, but more importantly, let, let's load up our vehicles with technology that helps you avoid the crash in the first place. Yeah, so what does a five-star crash rating mean for people? I mean, because in the industry, engineering, in the, the engineering circles and all that, they know, but like, if somebody is today uh, thinking about a new car, what does that mean for them? Well, the, the ratings are based on two vehicles of the same uh, size and weight, roughly, You know, crashing into each other, and it basically just uh, tells the percentage chance of a serious injury happening to the individuals inside. And when you're at five stars, I, I'm not going to be able to tell you the exact number, but it's down to something like five to ten percent or something. It's an extremely small number, uh, percentage-wise, <clears throat> that there's going to be a serious or fatal injury from that kind of a crash. That's essentially what five stars means. Pretty much, pretty hard to remove all chance of injury or, or fatality in a car because it's hard to account for every single variable. But like James said, what's really interesting is that they've got all these different crashes that they test these vehicles on that represent the most common real-world circumstances that people are faced with and that are often causing the most injury. Um, IHS is even more interesting because they keep looking at the uh, injury and fatality rates. They look at which specific accidents are causing them, and then they just kind of not going down the checklist. And for instance, Head-on collisions and side impacts were already addressed by them, and even rear rear impact. But then they started coming up with this small overlap test, where there was a front front end collision or a head-on collision uh, uh, with a vehicle, but it was only c catching the very edge of the front, which was outside of the main structures of the frame, and it was basically peeling the car like a potato and allowing yeah. the the force to get back into the passenger uh, compartment. However. Uh, now the manufacturers have responded extremely quickly since they've added this test and they've, in, and they've uh, added further bracing to the front of the car all the way to the end. And NHTSA and IHS you know, are basically driving these manufacturers to increase the safety of the vehicles every time they get to the next level down of like, okay, what's the next most common uh, injury and what kind of accidents are causing those? Now let's make that a test. So it's really fascinating to watch the evolution. These cars are just getting safer and safer. Yeah. So, James, uh, you think with that push from the authorities and the engineering from the manufacturers, are we really gonna get to a point where there's gonna not gonna, not gonna be any accidents? <laughs> well, you, you hear certain manufacturers discuss, you know, that that's the goal for their future, a crash-free driving experience. Unfortunately, we humans um, sometimes don't make the best judgments, uh, especially when driving a car. So I don't know if we're ever going to get fully crash-free, but when you start looking at autonomous driving, Uh, some of the technology that's, uh, that's going to be available very uh, near future, really kind of drawing in all these different safety technologies that Carl and I have been talking about and allowing them to really kind of pilot the vehicle itself. Uh, you know, I, I think these technologies have proven themselves over this uh, last decade or so. And, and, I, and my personal view is the more that we can enlist those systems and the more we can take away the, uh, the biggest variable, which is the, the driver, Uh, and all the different factors that can impede a driver's performance, then I think uh, we're going to be in a much safer driving environment. Yeah. So finally, uh, Carl, uh, is it worth for people to really invest in these technologies? Because sometimes they, most of the times, they come with a special package or an additional option for the car. Is it worth investing in spending this money? You know, I mean, I guess it's going to depend on each buyer's perspective on, on exactly how much safety they'd like to have in the vehicle. Uh, what we're seeing, of course, is that the technology will often enter at the high end and be only available in super expensive cars for a lot of money, and then it slowly but surely kind of migrates to the entire automotive spectrum and every price range. Uh, you know, the Buick Encore that we've been talking about is a good example. It's not an expensive vehicle, but it's got a great suite of uh, technology, either standard or optionally available. And even when you load it up with all the options, it's still not an expensive vehicle. The Chevy Trax even more so. Uh, of course, we know how, how hot the small SUV category is right now. So these are all vehicles that are slowly but, in, but surely incorporating increased safety technology. 
for lower money. Yeah. No, I was th thinking because the technology changes so fast and then like down the road in five years or seven years when people are ready to change the car, maybe that technology is outdated and uh, what will be the value of that uh, then? I think it's really just the, the, the price of doing business in the car industry. I mean, these the technologies, maybe you're not going to get a resale from them, but that's because they're becoming so common and ubiquitous. And that's really the thing. It's actually a good, it's a great thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, we just talked to James uh, Bell, the head uh, consumer affairs for General Motors, and uh, Carl Bauer, senior director inside the Kelly Blue Book. Thank you very much for your time, guys, and I uh, hope to see you on the road uh, pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.